Here's some basic tips on the design of a concrete building. My name is Tyler Lay, and this might help you in your class project. So how do you design a concrete building? Man, it sounds like it'd be a lot of work, but if you understand the maze, if you understand how to move through it, you can do it actually pretty quick. You can design structures like these awesome, amazing concrete buildings. We're gonna be talking about a building with a one-way slab and mild reinforcement. And the first step is to figure out the building layout. And that's what this video is gonna be mainly about. Now, if we're gonna figure out a big building like this, we gotta figure out where do the columns, the beams, the slabs, where do they all go, right? The number one tip I can give you is slab thickness, at least for low rise buildings, baby, that is where the money is. And that is where you have to focus to make sure you get that right. So you wanna find the maximum span for your slab to make it six inches or about 300 millimeters. That's the minimum thickness allowed for the fire rating. What am I talking about? I'm talking about if this is the slab and this is the beam, I'm talking about the span, right? The span in between the beams, because that is where the slab goes. So we have this sweet table from ACI 318. And the key parts for most structures are one of these two cases, either case A or case B. Case A is one end of the slab continuous and the other one not. And the other one is when both are continuous. Now, for a six inch slab, this means that my span length, if you do a little bit of algebra based on the equations here, can be either 12 feet for case A or 14 feet for case B. Are you confused? Don't worry, I'm gonna try to make it more clear. Let's talk about case A. Well, if we envision this slab, this one in 3D, we're gonna break it down into 2D. We're gonna look at just the cross section at the top here, and this is the plan view. So this is the side view, and this is the top view, and this is case A. This happens that my slab just stops right at the end. Doesn't go over the end. This one is not continuous, but look at over here. This slab is continuous, it keeps going, and that's case A. And that means that that span length, the distance between the beams, can be 12 feet to make ourselves, to allow ourselves to have a six inch slab. Now, how about case B? Well, the only difference is that you continue it over the beam, but guess what? You don't have to continue it very far. Just a little bit will all of a sudden allow you to use 14 feet for this interior span. So next, we have to worry about our beams. We got our slab kind of figured out, now we're, we're looking at our beams. We have to find this length, the distance between the two columns. We gotta get it right. Now we go back to our same table, and again, we're able to use it for the beams. And usually this is the one. One end continuous and one end not. That's usually what happens on the edge of our structure, like this. Our beam stops at the edge. That's gonna control that depth. Even though this one's continuous and it could theoretically go deeper, the one on the very outside controls and we use that depth throughout. Next, we wanna place any required columns and walls we might have. So yeah, these walls and these columns, any place they must absolutely positively be, we've gotta put them there. So let's figure that out. Sometimes your architect friends will tell you, yep, we need these about here, right? That's helpful. That reduces some of the guesswork that you have to figure out where these columns and walls are gonna have to go. Next, we have to fill in our beams, slabs, and columns. Now this is much easier said than done, but I'll talk you through the theory, the concept. So first, let's start out with our columns. You wanna place your columns at the right spacing already go off what the architect has given you before and place them where it's helpful. You have to make sure that your maximum span length of the beams and slabs are okay. What? Yeah, you know those span lengths we talked about before for the slabs and the beams? You have to kind of like walk them through, make sure you put columns in the right spot so the beams aren't too long or the slabs aren't too long. And you might say, what do I do if they are? add an extra column. Yeah, but again, you might have to talk with your architecture friends to figure that out. What? So let's talk about these beams. 
you find the longest span and that's the direction the beam goes. And you go back and check that table I showed you before to make sure that my beam is not too long. So I've, sh I've drawn the beams in here. Then you've got to make sure the slabs, the ones that run in between the beams, we have to make sure that that spacing again is not too far and it meets the requirement of that table we talked about before. And then the final step is to add edge beams. Edge beams, yeah, all the way around the outside of your building. You add edge beams. See, edge beams, they have them here. Why do you do that? Well, it helps. If there's any outside point loadings, these edge beams help stiffen up your structure and just protect everything. It's kind of like buying a case for your cell phone. Do you have to have one? No but it sure protects it, it sure makes it right, it sure makes it last longer. And edge beams did the same thing and I highly recommend using them in your structure. And then the next step is to find your gravity loads and your horizontal loads, but those will be covered in another video. So in summary, find your maximum slab and beam span. That table will help you do that, it's not that hard. Then lay out your columns and walls with your maximum spacings that you found before. That's the hard part. It, you have to iterate a little bit, but I'll tell you what, you pick one that works and you go. Seriously, don't spend too long on it. Just go and try and get it done. Then fill in your beams in the long direction and your slabs in the short direction, and then add edge beams. And with that, You've just figured out the first step on how to lay out a concrete building. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and give me a comment below if you have any other questions about this. I really appreciate it. And of course, check me out on Instagram and Facebook at concrete.tyler. Take care, everybody. Bye.